It's the show that could probably stop the run better than the Steelers did in the first quarter of this game. It's the Mike Sasson Show live from beautiful Mr. Small's Theater in wonderful, frigid Millvale, Pennsylvania. You are listening live at www.riversedgepgh.com or you are watching on Facebook Live or you're listening on the TuneIn radio app across the planet Earth or possibly somewhere else. I'm not exactly sure about science. Or you're listening at After the Fact on one of the many podcast formats either Google Play, SoundCloud, or iTunes. On today's show, we will be discussing the Steeler game, but not in the way every other stupid moron people that didn't know it was going to happen is going to discuss it, only in the way that Mike and Alex can discuss it. And it's going to make you at least bright, brighten your day a little bit if you're a Steeler fan. And if you're not a Steeler fan, then your day wasn't affected in the least. Anyways, also we'll be discussing the fact that Bono uh, isn't a huge fan of modern music in one way. Also, a bunch of Rose from Canada did a cool road trip, so I'll be talking about some cool road trips from my life, and Alex is big into road trips as well, right, Alex? Yeah. So we'll be discussing some of your favorite road trips. Also, we're going to bring back Crappy because there's someone that needs to be pooped on, and... uh, Ooh, I've been eating a lot of fiber, so she's going to get it. Also, Bar Thoughts and Experiences, Alex is going to be talking about the positive aspect of sexually transmitted diseases. I can, al- <laughs> I, I can already think of one. Uh, you had sex. Yeah, uh, yeah that's there, good. There, boom. I didn't even think of that one. <laughs> See, that's the, it's, that's the thing. It's like one of those things of like you sit there, well, what's the most positive thing? Well, you at least had to have sex at one point. That's true. There Unless, you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. then it's not a sexually transmitted disease. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. It's I mean, a something it... other transmitted disease. Anyways, also, we'll be talking about the fact that I made myself and Alex into uh, Family Guy characters, and I don't think that Alex is a huge Mike fan. Has, uh, no life. Yeah. No. Well, let's just... <laughs> Nothing dis- else to do but make us into Family Guy characters. By the way, it was Friday, so it was like the day that it was like the worst weather in the history of the world. Right, yeah. I had totally to cancel my good show. Excuse, yeah. yeah, it was... Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I don't really have a life anyways. Also, I'll, um, I mean... I compared myself to a work of art, so I have that picture as well. Yeah, that's what um, all the, the cool folks are doing these Yeah, that's days. what all the cool folks are doing these days. And uh, we'll have my five takes and bar thoughts and experiences, all that kind of good stuff. Um, again, you are listening to The Mike Sasson Show. And as always, Alex Clemens, producer extraordinaire. How are you doing today, Alex? I'm great. Now, I mean, are you distraught from the Steeler game? Because I know that you're a huge oh, fan of man. the black and gold. Was I sad? Yes. You yeah. Were- you're just... I almost cried. I was uh, cleaning my room. Okay. While it was happening. Were there cleaning lots of cleaning my room? Cleaning your room, just which is trying to avoid it. Really. Yeah, more or less. That's just your euphemism for taking naps and uh, trying to find like loose food in your room. Well, because I uh, Zach wanted obviously to watch it, um, and he was like, "Are you going to stay here? Or are you going to go to your parents' house?" And I was like, "I don't know which one's worse." Like, obviously, I love my family, but. Do I want to go there and just have them ignore me for to watch the game? Like, uh, you know? Yeah. I, I think I'd just rather be ignored at home. <laughs> just be, be ignored. Yeah. Where did I want to be ignored? Because at any, at any bar, they were going to be showing the Steeler game as well. So. Right, unless it doesn't have TVs. Yeah, which yeah. there are a few in your area that you yeah. do kind of go to. Yeah. Those are, you know, but great But, you places. know, I wasn't feeling like getting super drunk today. There you go. Because you knew that you had to. You had to bring it for the people. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would have brought it way more if I was super drunk, but, you know. Yeah, well, someday we'll find out. We'll do a drunk show once. We'll do a show where we just get just blitzed out of our gourd. And Are you also getting blitzed out of your gourd? Sure, why not? Okay. Yeah, that'll be one of the final shows because I'll say some stuff and everyone's going to be like, whoa, Mike. Whoa. Whoa, you're getting too real. What's happening? Yeah, because I get too real with the people when I get drunk. Right. Anyways, I don't get like that. Yeah, you you just get you get insulting to me. You always say terrible things to me when you get drunk. I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, you do. One time you were just like you called me a stupid motherfucker. I never. I've never said that. Yes, you did. No, I've never called anyone a motherfucker. Yes, you did. Ever in my life. Yes, that you did. No. Okay. That's not true. Oh, that's completely true. Never said that. Yes, you did. Anyways, <laughs> reviewing quickly. As I said but before, I could see why I could. I, yeah, you could yeah. see because let's just be honest. <laughs> you spend, the you spend any time with me, you pretty much go, "That's one stupid motherfucker." Um, Steelers lost today, forty-five, forty-two. What? By the way, that's my. Here's how I'm looking at. It. That's my new way of just telling people that nobody knows anything. At least they were close. Well, here's the problem. Here's here's where I get to it. 
If you would have told somebody prior to the – like all week, every expert that knows anything about football, and I'm using air quotes, expert – if you don't, if you're listening, are you on the an radio. expert? Would you consider yourself a football expert? Here's how much of a football expert I am. Okay. I, if anybody sits there and says, "Well, what do you think is going to happen to the Steelers?" I'm like, I don't know. Because like I have an opinion of what I think might happen, but if you ask me what will happen, I don't know. That's why I watch the games. If I knew what was going to happen, I'd go to the movies. I'd take a nap. I'd go, you know. So do the experts know what's happening? No, they don't. They just have an idea. But they have to seem like this is what's – and then they argue. that's their job. Yeah. I mean, it's a stupid job, and it's a pointless job, and at some point they wake up and go that I've – yeah, it's still a job. Most of our jobs are pointless. Let's just be honest. Yeah. But, I mean, like, yeah, it's a stupid, meaningless job trying to fill lives of meaningless people's existence with, like, how are the Steelers going to stop the run? Well, they're going to stop the run because they stopped the run. Really? I don't think they stop the run and then that's like six hours of programming if someone's like hey mike do you want to do you want to be a an announcer or like do you want to be i've been offered announcing and i haven't been like something that i've been like yeah let me go get it it's not something that i've like tried so you wouldn't want to be on one of the shows where they talk about the game like beforehand here's the the thing if if they if they wanted to they'd have to do it like i do like I would, like I wouldn't put on the suit and do it like everybody else does, where they're like, "Well, I think that the uh, the advantage between the uh, University of Pittsburgh's defensive line against the offensive line of North Carolina has to go to the Pitt Panther." Blah, 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 blah. I'd be like, "Here's the deal. Um, uh, Pitt's got to recruit better dudes. Uh, they don't have enough of them. Uh, they got to work harder to get better players because right now they don't have enough of them. And if they don't get better players, then uh, they'll continue to suck and this coach will get fired. And they'll bring somebody else in and he'll say the same bullshit and we'll go from there. That's an honest assessment of everything. Like today. Okay, here's my honest assessment of the game. They weren't ready to play because they were basically arrogant. Um, eventually, they woke up and scored a lot of points, but defensively, they just kind of weren't very good. They got to get better in stopping the run. Um, and uh, Mike Tomlin kicking that uh, onside kick with two minutes left was really stupid, but that's pretty much what he does all the time. But the thing that I want to talk about is the fact that 45-42, it, like it might be my new bank number. Because to me, it just symbolizes that nobody knows anything. Why? Because nobody in the world predicted that this game would become the fourth highest scoring playoff game in the history of the sport. Which, again, goes back to the fact that one of the smartest people that I know in my life is my sister Mary. She's at, she, she's every time I meet her, I have at least one or two instances where I'm like, ooh, I got to write that down. Yeah. Like she's that kind of person. And I was talking to her about comedy and I said, you know what? Some people say that, you know, that there was this one comic who, when I told him how, how old I was, said, "Ooh, don't tell anybody that. If you go to New York or L.A., tell everybody that you're like 32. Don't tell everybody what your real age is. And I told my sister that that kind of bummed me out because, like, I'm like, I don't want to be viewed as old. No one wants to be viewed as old, whatever. And she sits there and goes, Mike, here's the thing. If that guy actually knew anything he, he would be a trillionaire because nobody knows anything. And that's why I like and my can't new. can't predict the future. It's impossible. Exactly. But that's the whole point. That's why 45, 42 will become like I, I told my brother, I will text him at like three in the morning, some April day where I'll go 45, 42 question mark. Because my brother, everyone was so depressed walking out of the stadium. I actually went to the game. I was I got a ticket through my brother and me and my brother were laughing hysterically walking out of the stadium. Everyone else was like they just left their funeral. Me and my brother were just like, that's the weirdest game I've ever seen in my life. Like that made no sense to anything ever, but that's how life is. And that's what's great. That's, I mean, if you want to talk about sports, that's why sports are great. I mean, it, it's all fixed, isn't it, right? It should be fixed. It's like that, wrestling. It should They're be. Oh, you always run into that person who sits there and goes, you know, that uh, it's all fixed. And it's a, if it's all fixed, there's no way that they would have picked Jacksonville to be in it. because Not because like Jacksonville, there's anything wrong with it, but it's one of the smallest media markets in the country. They, every year, it would just be New York versus Chicago. New York versus L.A., Boston versus Philadelphia, and it's not. The Jaguars used to always be my NFL Blitz team. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Always. I, don't, I think it was just their colors. And, like, I liked their name. They have a very southern Florida-type teal-type color. Yeah, I really liked their colors. I liked their name. They did me well in NFL Blitz as well as they could. Yeah, as well as they could. And they had some – probably back then when you played them, they had a good wide receiving core, so it was good there. Sure, yeah. But one of the things that I want to bring up about playoff football – 
sports in general, and about life. Because that's, that's what this show is about, Alex, is about life. It's about moments. Yeah. It's about seizing moments. Okay. The Steelers today didn't seize their moment. <laughs> but just to show the difference between the Steelers and me, I seize my moments. Right. So today, as I told you, at the game, really super cold. And during one of the breaks, they bring out this guy. Every game, they bring out like a, a veteran, and everybody honors him and goes, yay, veteran. Yay. And this guy was a certified grade-A badass. Okay. This guy was like, he led, they said, this guy led a, uh, a uh, Army Ranger team into Afghanistan, and he was like special forces and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. And so I started clapping. And everyone started clapping so loud that I didn't hear the second part of it, which was that they based this new movie, 12 Heroes or 12 Strong, on it. Uh-huh. So all of a sudden, I see kind of like this tall kind of guy next to him taking a picture and I'm like I nudge my brother I go hey that's Thor I'm glad that that's what you called him yeah I didn't know his name I'm like that's, good. that's Thor and he goes what and I go that's the guy you played Thor he's why is he at the Steeler game and then I realized that this is the guy they based his character on in the movie yeah. Now, I knew that you would be a huge fan and want to know everything about the fact that I'm getting... Okay, let's make sure well, I get... Well, I right. apparently knew before you that Chris Hemsworth was at the game. Yeah, really? I didn't know. Yeah, because I look at, like, social media, and mm -hmm. it was everywhere. Yeah, I didn't know. It was... Yeah, I mean, he looked a little old. I know. He's he's a, he's actually a quite... He's, like, kind of my age. He's getting a little older. But the thing is, going back to me, now, it's not about Chris Hemsworth. It's about me, and it's about all, grabbing all moments. The time, yes, obviously. Yes. So, even though it was super cold... Yeah. I whip out the cell phone mm. and I go, you know what? I think Alex would want a nice picture because I was pretty close to the guy. I was maybe only about 20 feet away from him. And I snapped the photo. What would have been even better is if you went up and like took a little piece of his hair so we could sell it online for millions of dollars and then have, you know. How would I have gotten money. that close to him? It was like a barrier and all that uh, kind of stuff. You figure it out. You seize the moment, Mike. No, I don't break the law. <laughs> but seizing the moment is not breaking the law. It's not necessarily breaking the law. I think assaulting someone and it. taking their hair is breaking the law. It depends on how you do it. If you're like, hey, you went up to the edge and you're like, selfie, man. And then he came up next to you and you just like pick a piece of hair off of his coat. Mm -hmm. Nothing's wrong with that. There's lots wrong with that. How, That's really what's weird. wrong with that? If you if you just because it's weird doesn't mean it's breaking the law. It's breaking the law. That's not how laws. that works. You can't just take people's hair. Yeah, you can. No, if you you're can't. not pulling it off their head, like who cares? What if they had? No, okay, show the picture. Are you showing of the picture? Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, of the, the one I took. Fifty pictures. I took one. <laughs> I took one. You took one, and then you got even closer up, yeah. just in case you didn't know. Yeah. Well, I want to know which guy's the badass dude. The short guy. Aw. The guy with the shades, which brings up he my... He does look like a badass. He kind of looks like a really old version of, like, Bradley Cooper and uh, Ben Stiller mixed together. Yeah. <laughs> so just so you know, there's one picture with where it was taken earlier in Pittsburgh where there's Chris Hemsworth. He's the taller one. Then on the other side is Jerry Bruckheimer, the producer who produced, like, every, like, loud action movie from, like, Top Gun all the way to this movie. He's like, whatever. And the guy in the middle, the guy in the shades is the actual badass. Oh, no, okay. There's three people in the yeah. shades. Very yeah. confusing. Yeah, everyone wears shades. Okay. But the thing that gets me is the fact that, first and foremost, that's so Hollywood in that this is what the guy actually looks like. But, like, okay, in the movie, though, they get Thor to play him. They honestly have some similar features. Like, now that I'm looking at this picture, they do have similar features. Like, they have very similar noses and mouths and, like, very similar beards. One's about a foot taller, though. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> on screen, are you really going to know that? And who kn even knows the the regular dude, you know? But, like, they but actually will... they look kind of similar. Obviously, he's not as good looking as Chris Hemsworth, but, like, that's, you know, a little far-reaching. Okay. But I just want to bring up the point that unlike you want them the Steelers, to get a regular dude to play him. Yeah, get like a get like. There's plenty of actors that look like that who could play the Navy Seal or the the Special Forces guy. No, they got to get the six four Thor guy to play him. Because why? Yeah, because they want people to see the movie. 
Yeah, but every time, every every time it's like a female character, and they're always like, "Oh, there's unreachable standards for female beauty in the world. Let's get normal women to play." Like they take pictures of of chubby women and put them in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. No, well now and now and now and all of a sudden I'm like, "Hey, why can't they get a guy who actually is the size and the look of the real guy?" They're like, "No, we need the chiseled, you know, superhero guy to play the the special forces guy." So what you're saying is you're turning into a female. What I'm saying is, is that I should have played him because I am more relatable, and I think I would have delivered a better performance. Huh. I'm just saying. They have very similar noses. I would say, yeah. Your nose is completely different. My nose would Everyone have, would have known. No. <laughs> They'd have been like, hey, that nose is no way a guy who was in Afghanistan. Absolutely. Speaking of um, looking like something, as I mentioned before... Uh, because Family Guy, I guess tonight, it's uh, we're recording on Sunday, is celebrating its 300th episode. There was an app Jesus. to where you could uh, create yourself is a Family Guy character. Now, on Friday, when it was like the massive ice storm in western Pennsylvania, I had to cancel a show. So I was just sitting in my house, nothing really to do. Um, watch the new David Letterman interview with Barack Obama, which is very interesting. But I was just playing around on my phone. And I said, you know what, for fun, I'll create me as a Family Guy character. So show the people on the you, me as a Family Guy yeah, character. Yeah. How close did I how close did I get? Pretty close. Uh yeah. So if they were to describe me as a Family Guy character, you'd say, yeah, Mike, you you got a you got a point back. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking like back and forth, I guess. Yeah. Someone I should similar. I, showed... I you need like a I don't know. He is like more of a like gut gut. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like he needs a little bit of like silver in his hair. You yeah. know? They didn't have that feature. That was what was Shit. weird. Well, that's stupid. I know. I didn't make the app. Yeah. Now, the other thing that I did, which I thought was fun, because again, I didn't have anything to do. Uh, I created Alex on it. And I look like an old woman who needs to pee real bad. Okay, that's what you think you look that's like? That's exactly what I look like. She has this face on. She's like, oh, my God, I'm holding my piece so much. I thought it was a nice smile. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> oh, I sent it to you on Friday. a lot of bags fr- under my eyes, too. I, th- I thought I sent it to you on Friday. And I, I was look like, like an old woman. Well, the problem was is that is the only non, like, because you have very odd hair colors. So like, there's not, like, multicolored hair that I could have gone with. It's, so that was the bluest hair. That's the that's you actually. just pick, like, my natural hair color, you know? I don't even know your natural hair you color. You can see it right now. It's brownish? Yeah. Okay. But you also still have kind of the remnants of the blue. Yeah, but still. I mean, you know, you could have. I don't know. I think I got pretty close. I look like an old woman. You do not look like an old woman. Yeah. You look like you're very. I look like I'm at least seventy years old. I think you look absolutely stunning. Like if I was seventy years old, I'd be like, hell yeah, I want to look like that. So maybe as a Family Guy character, you would. Be, this is they just went Alex from the future. Yeah, yeah. I think you know the figure looked wonderful. I thought you would be impressed with that. I, I didn't even pay attention to the figure. I was too busy paying attention to how much this woman has to pee. <laughs> this woman has to be. My picture just looks like I'm just a guy like, yep, I'm just a dumpy dude. Yeah, I don't know. She's holding something in. Yeah, her feelings for the universe. And you're letting it all out. That's right. <laughs> I just, yeah, my picture looks like I just let a fart out. Yeah. By the way, you can see it, uh, the pictures on uh, my Instagram and uh, the, my uh, Facebook page. I posted both pictures if you wanted to check them out. Check them out. Um... So I think that was kind of fun, but you know, it'll be more (laughs) fun. fun. That was super fun. What we'll also talk about is again, we'll take a break. And when we come back, Alex is going to talk about the positive parts of sexually transmitted diseases. This is the speech that they should be giving in high school health classes. It's the Mike Sasson show. You are listening to it on the river's edge at www.riversedgepgh.com or on Facebook live or on the other things that I mentioned way earlier that I'll mention again in about another 30 seconds. It's the Mike Sasson show. We will be right back. Brian Crawford letting you know that Kevin Slogic, my State Farm agent in Allison Park, is here to help life go right and reminds you that you're listening to the River's Edge Radio Network. Hey, River's Edge listeners, Alex here from the Mike Sasson Show, and boy, have I got to tell you about Salon 22, a small local business located right here in Millville. I got my hair colored there about two weeks ago, and I still can't stop staring at myself. They use this awesome new technique called color melting to make me look like a mermaid. 
But don't worry, if mermaid hair isn't your thing, they'll meet all your hair goals. With things like balayage, rose gold, unicorn hair, ombre, as well as monochromatic color, which is your standard basic coloring. Seriously, they do it all and they do it good. Check Salon 22 out on Facebook and mention this ad when you make your appointment to receive a free color lock service to help preserve your color. It's a $20 value for free. I'm not kidding. Book your appointment now by calling 412-822-7222. That's 412-822-7222. It's the Mike Sasson Show live on the River's Edge at www.riversedgepgh.com or on TuneIn Radio across the planet Earth or on one of the several podcast formats, either Google Play, SoundCloud, or iTunes, or you are watching us live on Facebook Live. My name is Mike Sasson. Over there is Alex Clemens, and she loves to drink, and she loves to write down her thoughts during said drinking. She's drinking currently. She, you know what? Here's the thing. I'm just, Okay. Most of your radio shows, the people behind the boards are always focused so intently, and they're like, oh, I can't make a mistake. Alex is so good at this job. She's just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have nine, I'm going to get 92 things in front of me, and I'm still going to be drinking because she's Alex, the best in the business, and she does bar thoughts and experiences. Play your song, Alex. Maybe y'all can relate. My style's dope, and he waves it just slice it. It's a fresh cut, hope that you like it. All right, Alex, what do you got for us this week? Were you reading my shirt before we came back? I was, because it's a really cool it's shirt. It's amazing. Feed it's an amazing me tacos shirt. and tell me I'm beautiful. Yeah, actually, I hate, like, I don't actually like how the shirt uh, is structured. Mm -hmm. um, but you love the message. Yeah. It's everything that I've ever wanted on a shirt. I mean, it's very, just, what we, else could you want in life? Again, really? I think I always talk. I always think about um, eventually if you become a comedian on the road, they always say, well, what would you want for merch? And I always think about what kind of T-shirt I'd want for merch. Yeah. Like you have I, some people sit there and they will just be like, it'll say like Mike Sasson show, whatever. You have to have a shirt that people would want to wear irregardless if they even liked you. Right. And if you were a comic and your message was feed me tacos and tell me I'm beautiful, if that was your merch like table and that shirt was out there, boom, it would sell out immediately. But I want to add a back part to it that just says, but only if you're also beautiful. Yeah. Because <laughs> ugly people are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> ugly people. Because I could see like ugly people coming up to you and they'd be like taking tacos? your tacos. Oh, you're so you. beautiful. And you're just like, you take the tacos and be like, oh, you're ugly. Not and get out of my face. Yeah. Ugly people are so awful. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyways, uh, STDs. STDs from a shallow person. Go ahead. I'm not shallow. <laughs> just I don't want, you know, creepy people coming up to me and... Uh, you didn't say creepy, you just said ugly. Well, you know. I mean, they could be wonderful people and have a wonderful taco recipe, but you don't want anything to do with them if they're not attractive. I don't know. It depends. Okay, on the scale, if somebody, if you found a guy, like someone said, here's the thing, Alex, this guy, incredibly nice. Is he funny? He's insanely hilarious. He's like half as funny as Mike Sasson. Okay. Who's the funniest human being in the world. Uh, and also, right there, I say no. he <laughs> has... The best taco recipe ever. But like any sort of taco, like think of your best taco you've had ever. This the, the you would vomit if you ever had to eat it again compared to what this guy could. Is make he like six hundred pounds though? No, he's just like a normal like just like a normal normal ugly guy. Oh. Normal dude, you walk walking down the street that you ignore, who's probably a wonderful person. But I you would know, say yeah. You you do. If he's him. funny, he has to be funny. He has to be really funny, like hilariously funny. He doesn't have to be really funny. It just has to make me laugh. Okay. Which isn't always necessarily super funny. Yeah. But like, what is funny, anyways? That what is funny? I've what talked to you about this. That? What is what makes Alex laugh? Not this show. Anyways. Uh yeah. So STDs. Okay. Um. I've been watching the show on Netflix. It's called Love Sick. Okay. Um, and it's basically about this guy, and he finds out that he has chlamydia. Uh oh. Yeah. So he has to go back through all of the people that he's had sex with and tell them that he has chlamydia and like that they should get tested. Mm -hmm. So the whole show is about him like going back and like meeting each girl and yep. like their whole story. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So I mean, it's a good show. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah. You know, but it kind of high. It kind of makes it so that STDs, it seems like, 
oh, this really wasn't that bad of a thing for this dude. Like, no one was horribly upset with him. All of the girls that, like, he went back and talked to were kind of, like, okay about it, you know? Well, I mean, I think if someone comes up to you and says that, first and foremost, I think you can't just, like, freak out and start throwing tables around. I mean, you could. You could, but, like, that's not, like, a response that would be, like, suitable. You have to be an adult about it and be like, well, first off, it's at least the guy in the show was a good enough person to go around and tell people. So you do have to appreciate that. So if in real life, if someone did come up to you and be like, hey, I I know we had a relationship, you know, we had a you know a couple dates, whatever. Um, just so you know, I have chlamydia. You should maybe get tested. There'd be a part of you that would be like, you know what? I appreciate your honesty. I hope this Thank works you. out. Thank you very much. And it's chlamydia. Yeah. You know, if it's something else, then maybe. But like, it really made me think of some of the positives that maybe come along with getting a curable STD. Well, we've talked about someone being herpes worthy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like, so say you get chlamydia okay. and you have to go back through all these people. Maybe you find someone that you maybe overlooked before, you know, and you're like, wow, this person's actually a really great person. Like, maybe we should start a relationship and then we can just have chlamydia together forever. Mm, you'd be and chlamydia not even buddies. have to get it fixed. Yeah, you'd be chlamydia you know? buddies. Yeah. Let me ask you, has that ever happened to you where like someone that you, you were with like earlier in your life, you kind of run into them again and you kind of go, wow, maybe, maybe that was... My person, but I was wasn't ready yet. My maybe lobster. I'm ready now. Yeah. Like my thing always is, is that like maybe I did meet my special someone, but on that day I was just you know I was sick and I had to go to the bathroom too much and so I wasn't in a position to like pursue. Right. Or you know whatever. Those are the kind of thoughts I have when I'm alone making face uh, making Family Guy characters. Or it just bonds you with these people that like you you may not have had any, had any connection with before. You know, it's just like a one night stand. But now you have this bond because you both had some kind of STD, and you're like, you know, bros for life, man. It's mm-hmm. like a what are those called? Eskimo brothers. Yeah. 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 I think it makes people feel nice. Well, let me ask you a question. Would um, what if you just invited all these people to like a big party? Oh, believe me, I've thought of it. And then you just kind of like have drinks, have food, everything like that. Everyone wonders what are all these people, and then you just announce over the loudspeaker. No, no, you get like you have a little toast, you know. You like tap the glass, and okay. you're like, yeah. And then you, you just say, you know, hey guys, I brought you all here today to let you know that I have chlamydia, and you might have chlamydia too. And oh, by Cheers. the and by the way, <laughs> in the room next door, you can get tested because I'm that kind of nice dude. So you take care of everything that day. That changes the game. That changes the game, takes it to another level of niceness, and then ultimately then you're like, hey, everyone might have chlamydia. Let's start an orgy. Boom. Did did I ever tell you about my two STD scares? No. I will tell you right now. Okay. If you want to hear them. Sure, why not? Okay. So the first one was in ninth grade. (laughs) Damn. (laughs) Um it wasn't. It was literally the stupidest thing in the whole entire world. Uh, we were watching Degrassi. Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen Degrassi? Neil, Neil Degrassi Tyson. Like the, no, oh, okay. no, it's a Canadian show. Then I didn't watch okay, it. If it was a Canadian show, I didn't. Yeah, watch it. it's just like a bunch of kids in high school, and a bunch of shit happens to them. That's where Drake came from. Okay, great. Yeah. Anyways, um, as soon as you said Canadian, I'm like next. So on the show, they talk about um, this one girl getting gonorrhea of the throat. Okay. They say that's a huge problem in porn. Like I they say, yeah. Did not know that. Yeah, because you like you, obviously a lot of you know you know you're screwing around a lot like that, and so that's right. one thing they have to treat a lot. Huh. Yeah. Something. Yeah. The bad. more you know. But anyways, so we were watching this the one night, and then like three days later, my throat was like really horrible. Uh oh. Yeah, and um, like I was having trouble like swallowing, like my throat hurt so bad, and I was at school, and I was like, I don't know what this is, like what what's happening to me. I had that voice, too, just because I couldn't talk. Okay. Um, and so I asked my one friend who was watching Degrassi with me a couple nights before, and she's like, oh, my God, maybe you have gonorrhea of the throat. And I was like, there's no way I have gonorrhea of the throat. That doesn't even make sense. And we were convinced of it. And then we, like, looked up the symptoms and stuff, and we're like, oh, my God, I have it. And then after school, I went to, like, a Med Express, and they're like, no, you, you have strep throat. Like, and you're like, oh, thank God. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, more. more. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, but, totally yeah. more normal for a ninth grader. <laughs> One of the things always when you get to like WebMD or any of those things is like, like I've had like, a, 
you, you have like symptoms. You're like, oh, what could this be? And like, it's like, okay, you could have like cancer all the way to like the common cold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you could sit there and say, oh, I might have strep throat or I might have gonorrhea of the throat. Yeah. And then which you would have been a lot more awkward to uh, treat. Yeah. Yeah. I mm. couldn't just chew garlic. That's what I did for strep throat. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that's what you do for strep throat. Go ahead. It's amazing. Yeah, there you go. Um, and the second scare. The second scare is when I was in college. Um, I got a call um, from this random girl. It was like a random number. I just answered it. And this girl was like, hey, d- uh, oh, I should not say this person's name. Um, <laughs> like, hey, do you know Bob? And mm. I'm like, yeah, I know Bob. And she was like, have you ever slept with Bob? And I'm like, yeah, I slept with Bob. But it was like a, a long time ago. I don't like it was a while ago. And she was like, well, Bob has chlamydia. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, what? How do you know? Why are you calling me? Well, also, who are you? Why yeah. do you know this? And why do you know my number? And why do you know that I slept with Bob? Like, so many questions for you. And she basically just told me that and, like, hung up. And she was, like, she was very angry about it. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I do don't you know. think that she was somebody in his life that she had, he had given chlamydia to? And so he was trying, she was just trying to ruin his social life? I don't think so. So I went and got tested without talking to Bob first. So okay. I went and got tested, came back. Obviously, I didn't have anything. Well, I shouldn't say obviously, but I didn't have anything. I love um, obviously. Like, oh, there's no way that <laughs> only dirty, scummy people have the STDs. There's no way I, the cleanest woman in the world, might have it. Right. And it just so happened that one of my friends had also had an STD scare at the same time, so mm-hmm. we both went to Planned Parenthood together, and we both did. Got... You lock arms and like skip down the road and stuff like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, and like pushed all the abortion people out of the way. Get out of my way! I don't have an abortion. I have chlamydia. <laughs> yeah. da, 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 da. Uh, and then like we got the call saying that they that we didn't have STDs, and we both like ran down the hallway in school and like hugged each other, and it was a beautiful moment. Really, that's why I'm happy. About I love that that's somebody's happened. job at Planned Parenthood. He like has like ten people to call every day and be like. Hi, this is a Mike from Planned Parenthood. Uh, you uh, don't have chlamydia. Yeah, that's like a really important job, though. Yeah. you get that wrong, you're, you're yeah, you shit. can't get you can't. Yeah, he'd be like, wait a minute. You, uh, what's your name again? Are you <laughs> are you Alex C or Alex C S? Yeah. Because one of you has gonorrhea and the other one is pregnant. So, anyways, I <laughs> I did not have I did not have chlamydia. Good for you. Um, and then you know I just kind of you know went about went about my way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like probably six months later, I talked to Bob again. Mm-hmm. I was just like, we were like, hey, how's it going? Blah blah. And I was like, hey, oh, by the way, I should talk to you about this. Um, someone called me like six months ago and told me that you had chlamydia and that I should get tested for it. And he was like, uh, what? And he had never had chlamydia in his life, and he had no idea who this person was. So this woman was just trying to make everybody weirded out about maybe doing Bob? Yeah. So, like, obviously, I don't even even know if he ever figured out who it was or if it was just, like, some girl trying to be a bitch towards him. I don't know. But he did not have chlamydia and poop on that woman who told me that he did. How that, mean is that? That is really... Just to cold call someone like just that. Just cold call someone probably because, like, she he, probably Bob, like, dumped her or something yeah. like that. And she's just like, I'm going to ruin your she's life. She's heard about it. Ah, seriously. She's terrible like, people. This woman is prettier than me. Yeah. Absolutely. I get that all the time that I'm prettier than them. Yeah. So, yeah, those, yeah. Are, those are fun. So you're sitting there saying the positive parts about STDs is, number one, it brings people together. It really does. It, it, it's, it's, you know, it's something to do for a couple weeks. I mean, like, you know, obviously, like, you wouldn't be concerned about stealer losses. Yeah, you you're have, like, like, a mission. Yeah. You have a purpose in your life for a couple weeks. Yeah, exactly. You're like, hey, I got to figure out this chlamydia stuff. Yeah. And then you may find a mate for life. And you can just be chlamydia. In chlam- someone you least expect it. You could be chlamydia buddies. Yeah. Just skipping down the road. Yeah. Da, 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 da. That sounds nice. It sounds like a little cute cartoon. Isn't it? You should make that cartoon. Chlamydia buddies. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> just cute. Too cute I just see people. them doing that like little heel click jump at the end. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And then like a doctor coming on going, no, this is really serious. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get chlamydia. Don't get chlamydia. It's not as fun as it looks. Yeah. <laughs> the, the chlamydia buddies cartoon <laughs> is, kind of misrepresents the whole chlamydia thing. By the way, record for number of times the word chlamydia has been said on this show. Congratulations. Yay. Yay. That, I mean, we've said herpes a lot. I know. This is the first chlamydia show. I know. We're, we're just going to keep knocking down STDs until we're out of them. Anyways, it's the Mike Sasson Show. Thank you very much to Alex and her bar thoughts and experiences. Thank you very much very much for sharing. Oh, Next welcome. up 
is we're bringing back a segment that is very important to the show. We are bringing back the icon of this show, Crappy the Poop, and Poop on You. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Normally, there's music there. We can't so play both of them at the same time. Wait, I just want you to talk over the pooping oh, the whole God. time. <laughs> oh, God. I didn't know it was I'll that just leave brutal. It. I'll leave it in the background for you. No. You have uh, three minutes of, of pooping. pooping. No, turn off the pooping. <laughs> turn off the pooping. Come on. That sounds like a, that sounds like a hip-hop song from 90s. Turn off the pooping. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. No. There is Crappy the Poop. The symbol of all that is good in the world, Crappy the Poop, and Poop on You. We only have one person to poop on. I saw this person in the news this week, and I clearly felt that this person needed to be pooped on. It is Paula White. She is a spiritual advisor to President Trump. Yeah. And earlier this week, she claimed that every one of her followers should send her a month, a week, a day's salary, whatever they could afford, to her, or if not... God would punish them. Right, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I never understand why evangelicals and like religious people who claim that God is on their side needs my money. If God is on your side, then money should just appear. Money should just be in your account. God should will the money should just be like, oh, there's $10 million in my account because God put it there because God can do everything. I didn't know that... Uh Women could be preachers? Is that a stupid thing to say? I've never uh, yeah, it's seen very, a woman preacher. Oh, it's preacher. an insanely stupid thing to say. It's really, I'm really embarrassed that you said it. No, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, but uh, another thing that I always love is that uh, I saw this one guy. This was um, a preacher who was on his show, on his TV show, and he was explaining why he needed money for a private jet. Uh, okay. Because he said that he went commercial and he could just feel the demons of all the rest of the people and the hatred in that plane. And it just was unhealthy for him to be around such sinners. So they needed to give him money to buy a private plane in order to not have to be with these sinners. To be honest, I feel like that all the time on planes. There is a lot of negativity on planes, you know? I agree. So, Alex, look in the camera and say people should give you money so you don't have to be yeah, with those people. give me people. money. Let me start a GoFundMe so I can get my own private jet so I don't have to deal with all the negative people in the world. That's right. Just be, be in a little bubble of just your just own. Just want to be me. Just want to be you. And I always love – I love that she just said – she said it's seed money. She goes in and there will be dire consequences to anybody who doesn't give her uh, a month's salary. A month, though? It, like maybe like a week. Like maybe a week. How about zero dollars? How about we give her zero dollars? <laughs> I'm just saying, if she's trying to get people to give her money, you know, like maybe just lower it a little bit, like five bucks. She says give what I you can. I think more people would give her five bucks. Why would anybody give her a dollar? But I'm saying if people were going to give her money, I'd be more willing to give her five bucks than a whole month's salary. I agree that maybe she should base she – says, she says give what you can. Well, here's what I can. I can give you nothing. That's what I would say. But one thing I can give you is a giant pooping. So poop on you, Paula White, for using religion to try to make money. That's terrible. This is actually me pooping. I just put a cam I put a recorder next to my uh, next to my next to my That's toilet. Too much, Mike. No, oh yeah, the the pooping for three minutes was <laughs> just enough <laughs> for me admitting That's that it was fine, me. Yeah. yeah, that was fine. But then the three minutes, whatever. Here is Crappy the poop. We will leave him here because he loves the rest of the show. Um, up next is my normal segment, my five takes. Play my five takes, Alex. You don't have to yell at me. Again, this is my five takes. It's like my bar thoughts and experiences, but I don't drink, so it makes me a little weirder in my opinion because Alex does her things while she's drunk. Mine is just stone sober, which means my mind just works this way normally. Number five take. So I did go to the Steeler game today. One thing I did notice about the Steeler game, it was one of the youngest crowds I'd ever seen for a, a big Steeler game. Well, those old people can't stand the cold. 
Good. <laughs> I, one of the things that I, I really think there's starting to be a divide between the new Pittsburgh and the old Pittsburgh and the new Pittsburgh, which is, again, the young people who want to, you know, they, 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 they want shit faced. They want to get shit faced. They want to, you know, they, they want to cheer for the Steelers in their own way, the Penguins, all that kind of stuff. And then there's the old stodgy people that are like, no, this is Pittsburgh and it's pierogies and, and kielbasa and we're going to sing our damn polkas and all that kind of shit. I like to sing polkas. Well, don't yeah. exclude me from that. But you also, I mean, I love kielbasa and pierogies as well. But you know what I also love to do? Get shit faced and watch the Steelers. No, you don't. I know I don't. You don't. Anyways, but so I just said you're one of the old ones. I am though. not one of the old ones. <laughs> yes. I am not. I am not. Damn it! But I just wanted to say, first take. Steeler fans are a changing, even though kind of they're still the same. They're getting drunk all the time. Times are changing. They are a changing. It's like Bob Dylan said. Anyways, number four. Um, if smartphones are like drugs. Like people say when you use your <laughs> smartphone that you actually get like when you get a text or you get like a message right. or a like on Instagram, it's like the same endorphins that get hit into your brain like you did a snort of cocaine or shot of heroin and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Then when you check your phone in front of somebody else while they're trying to have a conversation with you, then in my mind, that's, the, that's why it feels weird because essentially you're saying, I need to do this drug to get over being with you. Huh. I need to like, cause one of the rudest things I've, I, I always deal with is when I'm talking to someone and they're just on their phone going, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. uh-huh. And it also pisses me off when I know that I texted that person and they didn't get back to me and they're constantly texting, which means clearly that I was like on the pay no mind list, which pisses me off to no end, which means like, oh, these people satisfy my drug. You, you're a bring down, you're a big, big loser. Anyway. Maybe that should make you rethink your life, Mike. It should. It makes me rethink my life for the rest of my life, and it just makes me sad. So thank you if you do do that, man. So, but uh, yeah, I think it's. I think it would be like if someone in front of you just started to have a conversation with you, and then you just started to snort cocaine in front of them. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah, that would be that'd be really weird. Let's get like, some like, cocaine for the show. Yeah, you're like Alex. You know, oh Alex, that's really interesting about your chlamydia, <laughs> and you're just like, hey. It's a little odd that just out of the blue, you just started blowing lines. I'd be like, let's party. Yes. Give me some of that. And you're just like, no, this is just my cocaine. <laughs> and you're just like, man. Okay, that's when it's rude. That's when it's if rude. If you don't share, then it's rude. Yeah, then it's not rude. Maybe well, that's what you should do. You, here, look at my phone, too. Yeah, but you no, know? that's the worst. I always feel weird when someone wants to look at my phone. Or the worst is I'll say, hey, look at this picture. And they grab my phone. And I'm just like, don't grab my phone. And they start scrolling through all the other ones, and then yeah. you get the really bad anxiety. Yeah, you're like, eh, don't two more, <laughs> two more, and you're gonna see something you shouldn't see. Yeah. Uh, number uh, number three. This has been the weirdest weather I've ever experienced in my life. No, no, yes, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, yes, it is. I feel like we probably had such similar weather. You know what? It's happened before. But not and in my every, life. Every year, it's like, oh shit, this is crazy. Okay, I've never experienced where I got into my car and it was sixty-eight degrees, and then twenty-four hours later, it was six. I've never experienced that in my life. The beautiful uh, universe we live in, Mike. It is. I've experienced it now. Like I was at, a, I went to work when I walked in. I was in short sleeves and I walked out and I it was it was snowing and ice and sleet. That's the weirdest weather I've ever experienced in my life. I've never experienced a drop in 60 degree temperatures in eight hours. It's, it's, it's getting, I'll, I'll, I'll say it, kooky. It's getting nutty, Alex. Okay. It's getting all kinds of I kooky. like it. I know, I, it, it keeps ke life spicy. You know? I'll tell you right now, it does keep you on your toes. Um, number two, I often say in my stand-up, the, st the, 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 the thing that bothers me in this world is that the stupid have won. And now we have to adjust to them. Like we talked last week about pods, mm -hmm. those like laundry detergent pods. Yeah. And the fact that six adults last year died because they ate pods. Yeah, because they just look so delicious. They look so, de but that's the thing. We, back in the day, we would just sit there and say, they're stupid. That's what stupid people do. We're down six stupid people. No. Now they go up to Tide and they say, hey, you got to change and make your, your 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 product less appealing to eat. And now this week, there's apparently a new thing where on YouTube people are recording themselves eating pods. Because why not? Yeah. Why not? It's, it's like poison. The That's why. Among teenagers. Yeah. Now. They're like, hey, will you eat pods? And I watch these videos for like 20 minutes. They're all the same. 
like a kid goes, I'm gonna eat a pod, and then like the like the stuff comes out of their mouth, and then they vomit it out. Because it's again, are they dead? Do they die? Hopefully, I don't want them around anymore. That's this is my problem with the world right now. We're protecting the stupid from getting rid of themselves. That's why we have so many stupid people. There's always been dumb people. There was the dumbest guy in the village, and then he would do something stupid, get hit in the head with a rock, and he died. And he wouldn't reproduce. So the village would stay a certain level of intelligence. But now those stupid people were protecting them, saying, oh, we've got to change the pods, not make people and say, hey, don't eat pods. So that's why we're getting a level of stupid. That's how the idiocracy thing happens, because we're not eliminating the stupid. These th The pods should be developed to, en to enhance our elimination of the dumb. You know, I felt pretty stupid when I uh, saw this picture. I was like, putting it in the thing, and I was like, that's a weird uh, scent of pod. <laughs> airplane, airplane breeze. And it's not. It's not airplane breeze. It was alpine breeze. Okay. It's like that's that's a. Really that doesn't weird make you scent. dumb. That like, just means you misread one thing. Yeah, I guess. By the way, they're now. Someone wanted so badly to eat pods that someone invented a way, and they showed it on the internet to use like Jello and gelatin to create something that looks very pod-like. That's amazing. But it's Jello. Yeah. What's the like foamy part though? What's the white part? I guess the just, soapy part. I guess just white jello. No. Or frosting or something. It has to be like it has to be that same consistency, Probably that frosting. like powdery consistency. Like frosting or maybe no. powdered sugar or something. No. Oh, that's not I the didn't same. read it. It's not I just, the same. It's not the same. That's smart though. Yes. That really is smart. They should just make a whole candy. Tide should come out with a candy that is that, you know? Or how about like half And clearly of the, label it. Yeah, but you, like you have a box and it's like, like you have like, remember nerds where like half the nerds were one flavor and the other half of the nerds were yeah. another flavor? They should have boxes where half of it's detergent, half of it's edible pods. Yeah. There you go. And I, if you're, and I if you're, use these to do my dishes. And so every time I use one now, I'm thinking of it. I'm like, oh, not, you, you know, it does look, look kind of like it would be a little tasty. You know? But you're not a complete like there's moron, a treat so you inside. yes. So you it's a little treat inside. <laughs> it, is. it seems like the the exterior of it is a little squishy and it's it's nice. And then you're like, I, yeah, I could I could eat that. What if it was like Cracker Jack and at the bottom, and like when you did your dishes, and then when it came out, you're like, oh, it's a ring, and then you just kind of went from there. That would be amazing. That would really make me want to do dishes. The, you know what? Smartest Damn. smartest man alive. Anyways, yeah. um, and then number one. This is kind of weird. This past week, there's been a, like a controversy between um, Michelle Williams mm -hmm. who, uh, and Mark Wahlberg. Both were in a movie. Always. always Mark Wahlberg. Oh, I saw this. Oh, yeah. Basically, they both did a movie called All the Money in the World about the Gettys and all this kind of stuff. Well, the original person who played uh, the patriarch of the Getty family was Kevin Spacey. Oh. So when they came out, when it came out about his sexual assault things, they're like, we don't want to release a movie with uh, Kevin Spacey in it. Shit. So they had to reshoot his scenes. Oh, God. So they brought in another actor, big time actor, who actually is getting like Oscar nominations because he did a great thing. And um, so there was, you know, initially the uh, director, Ridley Scott, came up to everyone and said, hey, everyone did the reshoots for free. Well, which is not true. No, no. Michelle Williams did them for basically per diem and like in total a thousand dollars. Mark Wahlberg got one point five million dollars. And so everybody comes out and says, this is unfair. Why did one get one thousand dollars and one got one point five million? This is stupid. Blah, 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 blah. But then the 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 truth kind of came out. Right. Basically, what happened was Michelle Williams signed a contract that stated she had to do the reshoots. Yeah. So she didn't have to get paid anything. So all she got was basically almost the basic that they had to pay her and per diem. Whereas Mark Wahlberg signed a contract that stated, um, as soon as you stop shooting, I'm done. I'm out. So when they had to get Mark Wahlberg back, they had to renegotiate with him. Mm. And oh, by the way, Mark Wahlberg also had a thing in his contract that stated that he got to pick his co-stars. So on top of the fact that if they wanted to get him, they had to renegotiate, they also had to sit there and he said, well, if you even want to put anybody else besides Kevin Spacey in this movie, you got to talk to me. Damn, Mark Wahlberg. Who are you? <laughs> Who does he think he is? He's the highest paid actor in America. Uh, right now. $68 million last he's year. He's just the worst. 
Like why? I'm sitting there going, "What? A, he's a good negotiator." But yep, yeah, yeah, he's a good negotiator. Also a dick. <laughs> I don't know why you gotta do that. Just do, just do, do a movie. You have enough money. Just do a movie. Sign their stupid contract. Just go along with everything. Just be a normal person. Why you gotta be like that? I don't like it. I don't know. I sit there and say kudos to Mark Wahlberg for signing a great contract. Fuck him. No. <laughs> I can't. No. But see, okay, back to the whole point I mean, that I was, was trying smart, to make. it was smart, but... It was smart. If, see, if you had a contract where they had to pay you a million... Because think about it. $68 million, 52 weeks in a year, about a million and a half dollars you have to pay him. That's the what whole he's... co-star thing, that's what really gets me. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, you have to pick your co-stars. So you don't like working with certain people, so yeah. you have to pick your co-stars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that voice? Just, ugh. Ugh. He put in his contract that he would, has to not like the people he oh works with. Oh, my God. I'm going to put that in my contract and the show will be over. <laughs> yes. But they, like, I, need, I only re I refuse to work with Mike. Well, it's his show. Yes. Well, then. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> well, then we can't sign this contract. Good contract. All right. Anyways. No, but at my point being, and then eventually Mark Wahlberg said, hey, I'm going to donate the $1.5 million to uh, the new charity being set up for def legal defense fund for women who are trying to, you know, fight sexual assault. And everyone said, all's well that ends Aww. well. But my thing is, what we really should be asking is, okay, let's get better representation, better agents for the women in Hollywood so that they could pull Mark Wahlberg's That's what people. he should have done. He should have been like, here, I will let, here's my agent for a while. Like, yeah. Here, you get my agent for a couple years. Yeah. And that'll make you the amount of money that I just made with this stupid bullshit contract that I signed. You just came up with the greatest idea ever. Yeah. Here's what we do. Or he should have just given Michelle Williams the money. No. Here you go. Here's what you do. <laughs> Here's what you do, okay? Buy our Lamborghini. All of the um, like Hollywood agents in the world do pro bono work, like all, like Schwarzeneggers or Stallones or Ro or The Rocks or all the you know the or or Will Smiths, and they all sit there and be like, okay, we're actually going to work pro bono for the female actresses to to basically work our magic in getting you more money. Boom, that's what you do. Yeah, that's all there. Boom. Kudos to Alex Clement. She just came up with that. Yeah. That's what, how, do you like that and idea? Mark Wahlberg just continues to win. <laughs> that's, that's, that's his next movie. Mark we Wahlberg. We kill Mark Wahlberg. And then ev what, we kill Mark Wahlberg. And then we give all of the money that he's made to all of the female actresses. <laughs> just even it out that yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> just split it up between everyone. Or, and then, and then you know, no one ever, no one ever can hire Mark Wahlberg again. So they start hiring females in his place because. Do you really think females would same. work in? You think yeah. females could work in Mark Wahlberg's role? I mean, he's not a su super manly. In every movie, he's just like a kid from Boston. Every movie, he's just like some kid from Boston. He could be playing the president of the United they States. They could have be like a kid woman from do Boston. that. A woman from Boston. He's like, yeah. <laughs> The woman from the, you know what it actually would be pretty interesting. Yeah, just a, <laughs> playing yeah, Mark Wahlberg. playing Mark Wahlberg's role. That's what we have to do. We have to get women to play Mark Wahlberg's roles. Yeah, <laughs> and he's great. out. He's out of the game. Yeah, just he's that. Done. Yeah, women will play Mark Wahlberg's Focus roles. Focus on burgers. Yeah. <laughs> Focus on burgers. That's where you go. And where he makes more money. There you go. <laughs> that was five takes. Thank you very much. We're going to take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to have news and notes from the world of sports, gossip, and weirdness. My name is Mike Sasson. You're listening to The River's Edge at www.riversedgepgh.com. We'll be right back. Go! God damn it, Brian. You need to calm down yeah, on the road rage. I'm sick of these people, uh, these assholes. The road rage, man. you got to calm down on the road rage. Well, I'm on where or... I want to get to where we're going. We have a lot of great stuff coming up. We're going to the Falling Water Bicycle Heaven, the Mattress Factory, the Knob, Trundle Manor. All right, which way do I go? Which uh, way do I go? Come on, right, come on. Right. Too late now. Right, come on. Well, too late now, you know, I got to keep going. I'm not going to sleep oh, like some asshole. Oh, come on, man. All right, you're listening to the Culture Cruise. You can find us at riversedgepgh.com, your local Pittsburgh area museum podcast. Yes, riversedgepgh.com and come take a ride with us okay there you go now it's on it's the mike sasson show 
well microphoned as always. That is Alex Clemens over there, producer hey. extraordinaire, who turns on said microphone. Yeah, you are a listening. Too late. Yeah, at <laughs> www.riversedgepgh.com. And remember, always comment away because guess what? At the end of the show, we read all the comments with what? comment your ass off. Uh, but again, you're listening at www.riversedgepgh.com or on TuneIn Radio or on one of the many podcast formats, uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, or Google Play, or you are watching right now on Facebook Live. Right now, it is news and notes from the world of sports, entertainment, and gossip. Go ahead, play said song. What's news and notes this week, Mike? (laughs) One of my favorite things in the world is when adult uh, actresses get into mainstream news stories so we find out what their real names are. Oh, oh, like, uh, oh, adult. Yeah. Like, like porno stars. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not like uh, not like not adults. like film stars that happen to be adults. Okay, I'm talking okay. women who get have Very sex. Confusing. Yeah, have sex on Just film call for a living. Porn stars. Yeah, porn stars. Sorry, I tried to gussy up this show a little bit. I, I'll never do it again. Um, so everybody talked about a uh, woman, Stephanie Clifford, and I'm like, who, who the hell is Stephanie Clifford? Stephanie Clifford. Oh, Stormy Daniels. I know Stormy Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love her work. Anyways. It came out a couple days ago that a couple months before the 2016 election, she got paid $130,000 by the Trump campaign to sign a non-disclosure agreement about a reported sexual encounter they had in 2006. What? Here's the thing that gets me. Are we looking at Stormy Daniels right now? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So this is 2006. So that would be 10 years earlier from 2016, which means Trump was in his early 60s at the time. Yeah. Why is the fact that Trump was able to have sex with this woman negative news? Now, they point to the fact that it was in 2006 and Melania and him were married in 2005. Uh, oh, but shit. is there a person in the world that doesn't think that Trump has had sex with other women with when Melania was been, you know, there's no person. He would never. Never. There's Never. There's literally zero people in the world who would be shocked that he screwed a porn porn star at a golf event. The thing that gets me is like, I feel like they could have paid her a little bit more money. She needs to get that Mark Wahlberg agent. (laughs) That's the other thing. She needs, she needs to get Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg would have sex with Trump and get like 500 million. Exactly. Because there's a stipulation in the contract that states if he has sex with a presidential candidate, that he gets. I yep. can't see that. But no, I, I just – something had to have happened during the sexual encounter because just the sexual encounter in general I don't think would have made that big a move. She must have moves. pooped on him. Must have. That's the thing because remember, sh- yeah, remember, the whole, be like- remember the whole peeing thing and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Because now we know they had sex. There's something about the sex act. She pooped on him. She pooped on him. That's yep. that's a smelly fucking thing. I don't know. That's she a, told me. Yeah. Yeah, she's, yeah. Stephanie Clifford or Stormy <laughs> Daniels. Yeah, I knew her back in 2006 and like right afterwards. She was like, oh my God, just guess what happened? You would, I was like. <laughs> you would have been in Baldwin at the was, time. You'd I have was been in like, like middle school. <laughs> yeah, you were in middle school. You're like, Alex, you don't understand. I pooped on Donald Trump. Me and Stormy Daniels. So we go way back. <laughs> way back. By the way, rate Stormy Daniels as a porn name. Oh, yeah. I mean, are you saying this? I don't know. Good I or like bad. Stephanie Clifford. Stephanie Clifford's not a bad porno name. No, yeah. What about Stephanie Daniels or Stormy Clifford? I feel like it to be like a Steph. I think Clifford's the problem. Is it? Stephanie's a nice porno but name. But then you could dress up like a, a dog. Yeah, she could be a <laughs> the red dog or whatever like that. Gives you some options. Yeah, again. But I always, you brought it up. I, I wouldn't even think of that. It's obvious that she, yeah, she she took a piss on him. Anyways, um, no, she pooped. She pooped. Ooh, she pooped. You're thinking it's poop? Yeah, she poops. Okay, that's she exclusive poops. from Alex. It's poop. I know her. Um, all right, so this was a nice story because now speaking of poop, McDonald's. No, I love McDonald's. Whoa. I love McDonald's. So much. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, so I thought this was a cool story. A group of Canadian kids were talking about their youth when. McDonald's for a brief period of time served pizza. It's crazy. And then when they were in there, like, they would always go to McDonald's and, you know, they were like 10 or 12 years old. So they were like, I like pizza. And then they'd eat the pizza. And it was, you know, McDonald's pizza would be exactly what they thought. So one of them Googled McDonald's pizza and they found that there were actually two still two McDonald's in the country that served McDonald's in pizza. In Canada? No, they were in the United States. Oh, okay. One of them's in Ohio. And one of them's in West Virginia. Okay. So they decide, hey, 
Let's go on a road trip, travel the eight hours, and go have some McDonald's pizza. So they did this uh -huh. whole video where they talked about it and they got to West Virginia and they had the pizza and all that kind of stuff. And it just, I thought it was a cool story because I always remember road trips and everything like that. So I was thinking of kind of the best road trips I've ever had. Yeah. My, I would say two road trips stand out. One was the Steelers were playing Cincinnati in Cincinnati. So I brought my brother Matt, my brother John, and my brother Tim, and we went to Cincinnati, stayed in Florence, Kentucky, which is right over the river from Cincinnati. Like, we looked at Paul Brown Stadium. Right. And we watched, and we went to the Steeler game. They actually lost to the Bengals. But it was, a, you know, we got to spend time together, all this kind of stuff. And it's always remembered as the Domino's hoagie trip. Oh. Because this was when I was nearly, like, 300, 400 pounds. So I was <laughs> consuming a ton of calories. Okay. So there's this place in... Um, in Cincinnati called like Skyline Chili, which serves all sorts of like what they call cheese coney, like cheese oh, hot dogs. Yeah. And we were consuming this. like this was how fat we were at the time. They were right outside the hotel. We went in there, each got four. Me and my brother, by the time we got to the door of the of the hotel, had eaten our four. So we did a U-turn and went back and got another four. Yeah. That's how fat we were. Yep. So then later that night, we're like, yay, hey, we gotta have dinner. Those cheese conies were just for like warm-up. Yeah. Let's order Domino's. And so my brother goes, you know what? I'd like a hoagie. Because at the Domino's where we had lived, you could get a hoagie. So we call up this place in Florence, Kentucky. We're like, all right, we want a large, you know, supreme pizza. And uh, my brother wants a chicken parm hoagie. And the guy goes, oh, we don't. We don't have hoagies. What? What's a hoagie? You know, we, and they go, you know, or like, oh, sorry, a sub, you know, a sandwich. And he goes, we don't, we don't, we don't have sandwiches. And my brother goes, what are you talking about? I just had a sandwich from Domino's like a week ago. And he goes, Domino's has never had sandwiches. <laughs> and we're like, okay, screw you, click. And for the rest, we were like, you know what? They're on the shit list. Because clearly, we just had hoagies. They couldn't have explained to us because we're like, oh, well, certain franchisees have hoagies. We don't. Right. They had to give us, like, the attitude of Domino's has never had hoagies. Well, that guy doesn't know. It might have been his first day on the job. And he's like, Well, then he's got to say that. Hoagies? He's going to say, sorry, I'm new here. I'm not aware of us hoagies. Let me talk to my manager. I ain't got no idea what a hoagie is. Or if I, sub, we explained. If someone said grinder, would you know what it is? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Someone says sub, would you a know really what it is? A really great app. Oh, really great <laughs> It's actually a, a sub in Connecticut. They yeah, call it right, grinders. Right, right, right. Anyway, so that like, uh, yeah, that too, and a, a sweet app for Alex to pick up gay men. <laughs> Anyways, my favorite. Yeah, your favorite. Um, so that's that road trip. Yeah, yeah. Then the other road trip was when I was in college. Right. In like back then, they've changed this now, but back then there was a big thing to where if you were if the street if the strip club had alcohol the women had to keep their un, they had to keep their g strings on and they had to wear pasties which sucks yeah i mean that makes sense yeah no it makes if you no have sense. alcohol you can leave it up to the imagination yeah but if you wanted to see them fully nude you would go to what's called a juice bar to where like they wouldn't serve alcohol you had to like go next door to get the alcohol or you'd byob and then they could get naked Mm, yeah. So uh, we were looking through like this magazine and there was a, a strip club in Springfield, Massachusetts, which was like an, like two hours away from where we were to where they said fully nude with alcohol. And we're like, shit, we're going. So this is all I've ever dreamed. This is of. all I've ever dreamed of. So in a snowstorm in Connecticut, we drive all in the same like SUV drive to Springfield, Massachusetts to go to the strip club. And uh, by the way, it was kind of an off night. There were exactly four dancers working. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you And they're amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they were. No, they were. I they, bet they're amazing. Yeah, they were. Uh, by about a half hour, we realized, um, yeah, we'd seen all the girls. Do you ever remember, like, any of, uh, any of the girls from the strip clubs that you've been at? Have you ever been, like, one just really stuck in your head? I could visualize them physically, but I don't remember, like, their names or oh. anything like that. Okay. The one that always sticks out is the one that knew my sister-in-law in, right, yeah. uh, in, not my, yeah, my sister-in-law in, uh, Somerset, yeah. but I don't remember her name. Right. Um, oh. and, uh, yeah, I, I remember faces. The only thing that always weirds me out is like, I remember like a strip, like I'd be like, well, I remember that stripper. She was so hot. And then you think about it. You're like, oh my God, that was 1996. It's 20. That's like 22 years ago. Even if she was like 20 at the time. 
She's probably like like with kids and fat and like you know. Yeah, I was a stripper back in the nineties. Maybe she's still doing really good. She's still tri- stripping. I hope keeping so. Keeping in shape. I hope know? all of the women out there that were stripping back in the nineties in Connecticut that I saw are still at it and still stripping. By the way, what is your favorite road trip that you've ever taken? I don't really have a fun one like that. Like I've never gone on like a like. Oh my god, I need a McDonald's pizza right now. Let's go get one. You know, you went on a road trip to go see the uh, Big Mac Museum. Yeah, I guess I don't normally consider road trips places that are like it has to be like, you know, two hours away for me to consider it a road trip, you know. But yeah, I, I guess that was that was like a really big mission that I was like, oh, this is going to be the best day ever. We're going to make the most of this. Yeah. And it was just like, uh, oh, it was a McDonald's with like a plastic, burger. a really big burger statue, and, and you had a Big Mac burger though. paraphernalia. Yeah, you, yeah, I did have a Big Mac, but I have those on on the reg. So, um, by the way, the new McPick two for five bucks to be able to get a Big Mac and ten piece chicken nuggets for yeah. five bucks. Can you get two Big Macs? Yeah. Oh, they had that before, right? Well, they took it away and they bring it back, and they took oh, okay. it away and they bring it back, but now it's back. Oh, good. See, I want variety. I don't want the two Big Macs. I want Big Mac and I know you hate their chicken. Two nuggets. Big Macs is always just like it's a challenge and it's it's a wonderful one it's not to accomplish. Ch- not for me. Well, not you. Yeah. Value a little bit of a smaller person. Yeah. And to eat two Big Macs is a lot of food for me. Yes. But you do do it. I do do it. You yes. do 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 it. Anyways, okay, so that was my favorite. Put any kind of cool, uh, if you uh, remember any cool road trips that you made. Now, another thing that's making news right now what? is a woman who used the return policy at Costco, in my opinion, to her extreme advantage. Okay. So she bought her Christmas tree at Costco. Now, Costco, and I've, I've worked with them and everything like that, has the best return policy in Agreed. the business. Yeah. Agreed. You can return one of those if it's electronics are like 90 days, but everything else in the store, you could bring back a, a something you bought 20 years ago from Costco. I and did that take with my back. futon. You just, oh, what did I you? had a futon for like five years and it started like it was, it like started to peel apart. Mm-hmm. It was like fake leather and I took it back and they gave me a whole new one. Whole new futon. There you go. Boom. Without anything. I didn't need anything. Because here's the hint. They make the money off the memberships. Anyways, so this lady had her Christmas tree. Christmas tree obviously died because it's after Christmas. Instead of throwing it away, took it back to Costco, and they, re- they gave her her money back. Listen, Mike. So I think that she has a good reason for this. What's up? Um, so my parents also bought a Christmas tree from Costco this year, which they have for the past couple years. Okay. And this one that they got, they kind of, when you go to Costco, you don't really have much of a choice of which tree you get. They kind of just like hand you a tree and it's mm-hmm. all wrapped up and you have no idea what it looks like. You know, you're yeah. not other places. Like if you go to Home Depot, you can like pick out the perfect one and stuff. Yeah. You don't really know what it looks like. Mm-hmm. So, um, this one that we had this year died a lot faster. Like we don't have our Christmas tree up for very long, you know, like it's, we put it up like the end of December and then don't have it up for very long. But it died much, much faster than any other tree. So this woman might have had something there. She might have been like, yo, this tree is not lasting me. How long my other trees last me? How long should a Christmas tree, if it's alive, last you in your opinion? I don't know. It seems like at least like a month and a half. A month and a half? I think if the Christmas tree lasts past New Year's, you should be good. We've had Christmas trees that like we've had Christmas trees up until February. I've had Christmas trees up till February. Amazing. I know. But, but I mean, no, I'm just I saying, mean, if it gets past fe- January 1st, I'm saying you're, you should be okay. The only thing that amazes me that sh- is that she brought the whole Christmas tree with her. You go, lady. Like, I would have just been like, hey, this is my Christmas tree. It died a lot sooner than I thought it would. Can you give me my money back? She brought it with her. Yeah. She has dedication. Well, she wanted that refund. Now, but the only problem is I know how they work. They basically would sit there and say, they'll take it back once, but if you do it multiple times... They're gonna sit there and say that they'll, they could refuse. They could uh, take away your membership. Oh, so shit. But in yeah, my mind, to kudos happen. to this woman for using the system to her advantage. So that's a good thing there. Um, also, I think Alex. Until recently, you would have liked living in Saudi Arabia. Why? Because until recently, it was banned for women to be at sporting events. I don't want all women to be miserable. <laughs> But if, uh, wouldn't you like that excuse to where it's like, oh, you want to go to the game? Sorry, women are banned from the sporting event. No, I'm okay with telling people no. Okay. 
I'm okay with telling them that I don't like sports. Well, guess what? This week it changed. This week now, you actually, they said, you have, you can now um, go to sporting events as women. So congratulations to Saudi Arabia for letting women. Now, there are parameters. You can't sit in the general section with men. You have to be in the family section, um, and you do have to bring uh, a man with you. But now you are allowed to watch soccer like everybody else. They got a really bad photo for this. Like, really bad. Like, really, this is the photo that you chose? Because all of the women in it, almost all of the women in it, are on their phones. <laughs> And I was like, Wait, really? That's the photo that you chose? Like, you did that on purpose. No, totally I didn't. That did. was the photo no, that was in the... No, not you. Oh. Like, the people who, whatever, put this out into the world, like, chose that on purpose. Like, hey, look, we let women come to stadiums, but this is all they're doing is being on their phones. They're, yeah, they're just looking <sighs> to shop. That's all they care about. You know, people enjoy sports in different ways. Absolutely. Like, you like to go to preseason football games or nice weather. What other sporting events do you like besides preseason? Um... I like soccer. Would you go to, like, the Riverhounds or anything like that? No. Okay. But I like it. If I had to watch a sport, I would watch soccer. Do you, are you going to watch the World Cup? Because that's the big-time sporting soccer event this uh, summer or whatever. Uh, probably not. Okay. I don't know when that happens, so um, probably not. Okay. Well. But maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I love how you kind of you kind of threw that in there. Find maybe me a soccer I will. husband. Well, speaking of women again, um, a woman, 45, out in England, was having a little trouble finding a man. Aww. So her name is Amanda Teague. And so she decided, um, she was waiting one night in her bed, and she felt a psychic spirit. And she felt an energy. And it turns out that uh, it was a dead pirate from the 1700s. Yeah. And so this past week, she has legally married... The dead pirate from the 1700s named Jack. Can you do that here? Uh, no. You have, Did you look it up? Uh, according to the story, sure? I didn't look it up. up. According to the story, they, she had to find someone in like uh, the, uh, the like some judge that would do it. And she had to take a boat to international waters where like everything was legal. Like he could have murdered like five people. But she is now officially married to a dead pirate. And uh, she's now writing a book with the dead pirate to discuss and help women find their afterlife soulmates. I wonder what that was, reception was like. What was what, how many people were at the reception? I bet you his family didn't even show up. Like they're probably against it because is this technically like like almost rape? like it? But I don't know if there was <laughs> was it rape because she felt the energy and kind of like psychically said, "Hey, I'm into this." I don't, I don't know. know. I'm all for it. I'm, I mean, I'm not against it, but I'm I just think, saying. I think. But a she's pirate? I don't know about here. a pirate, though. Ooh, see, that's yeah. the thing. About, but you know, if I'm gonna pick someone. I pick a pirate. They're gonna protect me in the afterlife. No, they're not. They're a bunch of. They're 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 scoundrels. They're they they raid the seven seas. They have hearts. They don't have hearts. They don't really listen to do. the movies. They don't. They they're do. not all Johnny Depp. No. No. They, they do. I know. No, you I don't un- know. They have spoken to me. <laughs> okay. In my dreams, they, they have, have come to me, and they said, "Hey, listen, Alex. You know, we we also care about people." Oh, okay. No, they don't. We just so happen to steal money, and that's you know how yeah, we like they're, live they're like and the stuff. criminals. But you know, yeah. but they have doesn't mean they don't care about people. No, they just it's don't exactly care about what certain people. Yeah, <laughs> they only care about people who are them and not anybody else. But again, kudos to this woman for marrying a dead guy. Um, Bono has come out and said something that a lot of people are kind of like Bono being like the super kind of progressive kind of the, you know, the Mr. You know, worldly helping everybody, you know, get AIDS medication. Very nice man. All this kind of stuff. What did he say? He said that he feels that music today has gotten very girly. Oh. He says that Bono said that. Yeah, Bono said his that. music is not girly. Yeah. It's what he said. His music is rock music. He right. feels that right now rock music is a, a right now the only genre of music in which really elicits male like basic rage is hip hop, and he laments the fact that there's no more rock and roll. Who is he? He should go hang out with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> You figure out their lives together. They, they probably have the same agent. Yeah, <laughs> really, honestly, they're like you don't Bono, agree with this him? is something that you should say. No, I don't. I'm. Who is he to say? I don't think that his 
I think that his music is girly. You think his music is girly? Yeah. But do you think that most, like, there's 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 not that hardcore, you know, rock and roll anymore? I don't think that his music is hardcore rock and roll. And like, there were bleh. protest songs. Yeah. You know, the bl- Sunday Bloody Sunday and, and War. And there's and no songs like that now. That's none. Not, I think that not, maybe he's just not listening to the right music. Maybe he's judging all of the music off of maybe what's, like, most popular mm-hmm. and not off of, like, everyone in the world, you know? I think he's being a little poop face. Being a poop face. In, in Alex's world, that's good and bad. It's bad, always. Always bad. But, what, you know, what if that's what you're into? Unless you're like, oh. Poop face. <laughs> no, I don't do that. Uh, finally, final story is uh, you want to talk about a story that made me feel really, really old? Yes. Okay. This week, 19 years ago this week, The Sopranos premiered. Oh. And I remember vividly watching The First Sopranos. And the way the headline read was, you know, Sopranos, the greatest television show of all time. Shit. Now, I will say this. It's an amazing show. I loved it. I watched every one of it. It was the last television show that was like a sporting event to me. Like, I looked forward to the new Sopranos. Right. It was an incredible show. And But I will say this. I, you can debate whether it's the best TV show of all time, but I will say this. It's the most impactful in it. If it wasn't for Sopranos, there's no Game of Thrones there's no House of Cards. Wow. There's no Breaking Bad. There's no before that. The thought that the best television show on television was on cable was laughable. Yeah. I always tell this story when people always laughed at me when because again it shows how old I am. I remember when I was in high school. It was in the mid '90s, and they were doing stories about the internet. And they didn't call it necessarily the internet yet. They called it the information <laughs> superhighway. And I remember being in my television studio at Fox Chapel High School with my TV teacher and the guy whose job was it to fix all the TV equipment. Right. And he goes, what the hell is this information superhighway? And my teacher goes, (laughs) you'll eventually have 500 channels. And he sat there and he goes, what the hell are they going to put on 500 channels? And he goes, there's going to be a fishing channel. There's going to be a football channel. There's going to be a comedy channel. There's going to be this channel. And he just sat there and couldn't, he couldn't visualize it. And he goes, he goes, well, what's going to, you know, what's going to, what do you mean there's going to be a comedy channel? He goes, at the biggest show at the time was like Home Improvement. He goes, Home Improvement won't be on ABC, NBC, or CBS. It'll be on a separate comedy channel. Yeah. And he just was like, that doesn't make any sense. He's not a visionary. Yeah, he's not a And to the Sopranos started the momentum that if you really wanted to make the best TV shows, you actually had to leave the networks and you went to HBO, Showtime, Netflix, all these kind of yeah. stuff. And really, the best TV shows are on a- AMC, uh, HBO, you know, all those kind of shows. So again, most impactful, I believe, but again, made me feel really, really old. Also, I want to add this as an aside. This isn't part of news and notes. This is just me being a very proud brother. My sister Meg, um, very, very proud of her. She um, recently lost a good amount of weight, kind of like I did. Um, and so much so that uh, the people that helped her lose the weight put her on the cover of a magazine. What? So that's her on the cover of a magazine looking with her dog. beautiful with her dog. But kudos to Meg. Very, very proud of Yay, her. Meg. And uh, again, I come from such a fame. Every iPhone commercials and magazine covers. Is she gonna win the Pimp of the Year next? I don't know. Year? 2018 Pimp of the Year. She's up. She's up there right now. I'm. I'm terrible. I'm like ninth. Last. Out, yeah. of, out of eight kids, I'm ninth in yeah. terms of Pimp of the Year BCS rankings. I would say probably like your nieces and nephews are above you right now. I would say Mia, simply matter of fact, because she said something what was insanely funny and cute a week ago. It was during the national, national championship game. And it was like 11 o'clock at night. I was on the phone with my with my brother talking about the game. And Mia is still up. It's 11 o'clock at night. So my brother goes, excuse me, Mike. Mia, why are you still up? Why are you still up? And my when Mia, three years old, looks at my, my, my dad, my brother, her dad, and says, because I had to ask mommy a question. <laughs> And my, my brother was like, what possibly could a three-year-old at 11 o'clock at night need to ask? 
Hey, mom, tomorrow, still cartoons and, you know, hanging out with grandma? What are we yep, having for good. lunch? <laughs> yeah, what's for lunch tomorrow? We really have to, yeah. I got things to do. I got to plan things. I got, like, Google, you know. I got so many different things that I got to do. I got to schedule some stuff. Is that thing, is still going outside and sled riding still on the schedule? Yeah, that's it. So, again, Mia, again, I would say up there. And then what Carly's was the question? And, what was, I didn't get the question. Damn it. Yeah. That would have been the head. Waiting well, the whole time for what, that. Yeah, what the question would Oof. be. But uh, Big yeah. so I'd say Mia, Mia and Carly and Jack just, you know, just being Jack. Like a little potato. He's got a well, he's now crawling and walking. So yeah, he's, he's a moving gonna, potato. Yeah. So I'm might right now I'm probably fourteenth or fifteenth. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I'm even yeah. I'm up there. Yeah. Alex is like second. <laughs> Worked my way in there. By the way, Meg uh, listens continuously to the show. Thanks, texted Meg. me and said loves Alex. Love me. She actually said flat out, she goes, I'd really like to meet Alex because any person that can put up with you for almost two years is a saint. I feel like if I walked into like one of your family gatherings, everyone would be like, Alex! I, you would. Just like that. And, and, then, and then I'd walk in and they'd just be like, <laughs> Again? Yeah. This Mike, guy, really? <laughs> this loser again? <laughs> again, thank you very much, Meg. Very, very proud of you. But also very, very proud of the show and very, very proud of all the listeners and viewers. And because of that, we always comment on your comments. It's comment your ass off. Play the song. Say hello to the world. Say hello to the Let's see what we got uh, this week, Mike. Let's see what we have. Um, Sam has multiple questions for us. Okay. He says, is this a new episode? I said, yes. Yes, it he is. Said, in color. In color. We are in color in, we now. We are in color we on the Facebook We made some improvements, line. and we are in color now. Yeah. Uh, it's been a long time coming. There you go. Uh, also, are there commercials? We do have a couple commercials. We do have a couple sponsors. But so I'm in we, the commercials, I know, so you don't even so have famous. to miss me. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's like in the middle of having the show. We're going to take a break from Mike. Not Alex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, were the Steelers too focused on Jacksonville this week? Uh, you, that was they my were Pittsburgh too... accent, by the way. Yeah. I hope you like that. They, I think they weren't very focused on Jacksonville. And that, again, points to uh, the fact that uh, this team, again, didn't rise to the moment like I did when I took Thor's picture, which was big. I'm just saying the fact that Not as big I was as getting cold. I was making sure that that picture was taken. Yeah. And, again, yeah. Yeah, and then, then Alex called him old. Yeah. I love that. And he also said the Steelers suck today. They did. So, they really uh, did suck today. And then Kevin said, two max. Big max. That's two big max. I... Two big max for $5. It's a steal. It really is. It is a steal. And by the way, like that to me, though, it's it's. I would say that I would like to get two big max in here and watch you consume them. That would be, I, I don't think, is it, could you, is it in a sitting? Would you have to pause? What would be the deal? You can't pause. Okay. They're usually already cold by the time that you're like eating them. Well, okay. Do you have fries with that? Uh, depends. Depends on what? How crazy I'm feeling. What's the cra- What's the largest <laughs> meal from a fast food place that you've ever sat and consumed by yourself? I would say Taco Bell. How many? For tacos? sure. Like you always get like that twelve pack. Have you eaten a twelve pack of tacos? I have eaten a twelve pack of tacos. Don't, don't clap it while there's microphones around, Mike. That's like the worst thing in the whole world. I don't care. That was that so deserved. bad. It's even worse than just regular clapping. Uh, my most, my most like, it was a moment to where I was very proud somewhat, but then later on I was like, I shouldn't have done that. There was something that Domino's used to have called the Dominator, which well. was supposed to be for like, a group of people. Naturally. So it was in college, and so someone goes, hey, why don't we all chip in and we get a Dominator? And I'm like, okay, I'll get a Dominator. And so they get the Dominator. Someone puts it on the ground, and obviously I'm hungry for pizza. I start eating the pizza. It's like square pizza and all that kind of stuff. So I start eating the pizza. Everyone's just like, oh, yeah, we need a plate. Oh, where's the soda? Oh, we need napkins. Oh, yeah. And then eventually they go, okay, open up. And uh, I'd eaten the Dominator already. Damn, Mike. And I was, was just, everyone pissed at you? They were all just astonished that I consumed it so quickly, before, right in front of their eyes, and they didn't even notice that You're it like, was yo, gone. Dude, what are you doing? Well, I, just because I'm a nice guy, I ordered another Dominator for Yeah, that. and then they had to wait. I know. And then I ate half of that, too. Dick. <laughs> now I really want Pizza Hut pizza. Yeah. Like, real bad. Okay. And two Big Macs. Okay. And then some tacos. You know how many freaking sponsors we could get by just feeding Alex... 
That should be a segment every day. Somebody feed Alex every show. And Someone then feed, feed me tacos and tell me I'm beautiful. There you go. Someone on online, tell them she's beautiful and then and e email some tacos. Send me some tacos. Send me some tacos. I'll Anyone? give you my address if you send me tacos. Don't give strangers your address. <laughs> totally do that. Dude, I, for, I love you. Like, how do I get to Alex? I don't like, care. just feed her tacos. She'll tell you exactly. She's like, come up to my bedroom. We'll hang out yeah, if you yeah, have the tacos. Yeah, as long as you have tacos. Show yeah. me the tacos first. Yeah, show me the tacos first. She'll be like, I'll give you tacos. I'll watch you shower. It's like, fine, great. Just give me the damn tacos. I don't care. Yep. <laughs> Any other comments? No, that's it. That's, that's, it. that's it. That's it. Thank you very much for everybody. That was comment your ass off. Again, thank you very much to all of the listeners. Again, you are why we do this. Your adulation. If you see me, if you see Alex, come up to us, say hi, say you love the show. We always love hearing from you. Also, keep supporting the River's Edge local music. We have now a date for the Millvale Music Festival. Yeah. May 12th. I've already put it in my calendar. It's going to be incredible. Incredible. It's going to be the greatest musical event in the history of mankind. It's going to make Woodstock look like a unemployed man watching a Dairy Queen burn down. I don't know. I don't even know what that means. Okay. Okay. Anyways, it's gonna it's gonna be an amazing moment. So again, May 12th, Millvale Music Festival. Keep listening to the Rivers Edge, www.riversedgepgh.com. Keep supporting local music. Keep supporting local comedy. Uh, I'm all over the place. I'm in. Uh, I was just in Ross Traver. I'll be uh, in uh, West Allegheny, and also at Hambones this Saturday, 10 o'clock. The Hambones uh, Rumble. I'll be performing there. It's gonna be all new stuff. It won't be all new stuff. Anyways. My name's that. Mike. That's Alex. Again, thank you very much, Alex. You did a wonderful job You're again. Welcome. We'll see you next week. It's the Mike Sasson Show. Bye. Bye.